So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first? Uh, I see what you did there. Yes. Yeah. So this is McMahon CG. Talking here with Ghost Crow. Or just Beaster. You can just call me that. But let's let's stick to Ghost Crow today. Okay. So last time it was Beaster. This time it's Ghost Crow. Yeah. Possibly Beaster. Yes. Someday I'm going to talk you off the ledge. We'll get you just straight Ghost Crow. Just straight Ghost yeah. Crow. I might change my last name to Ghost Crow. Yeah. Huh? Your real last name or real? No, we don't talk about real life here. Okay, that's, well, never mind. That's off limits. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, so you and I were talking today about a topic that's very near and dear to your heart, which is, namely, a sense of adventure. Yes. All right, so basically, the reason why there's a phrase instead of a single word is because I don't think I know a single word that encapsulates this idea. The sense of adventure is this feeling that you get when you first start playing a video game and you get excited for it. All right, so I got to stop you right there and okay. just say, yes. has that ever, ever even happened to you where you just started playing a game and you just got immersed in it, you couldn't stop playing? Yes. What game? Most recently? Batman Arkham Knight. Uh, Why? Okay, so initially it was just very overwhelming with all of the menus and all of the collectibles and all of the side quests and all of the AR challenges. Maybe I'm just getting old, but it was a bit overwhelming. But the more I started playing and the more I got into it, the more it just sucked me under. It was essentially like quicksand, you know? You're not supposed to move. I don't know if that's a legend or not, but it was amazing. And I don't know if the sense of adventure applies to Batman Arkham Knight because it it happens slowly, you know? Hmm. But there are games that just sucker punch you with it. I think the first time... Like I Candy watched, Crush? No, 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 no. no. Stop. <laughs> stop. I, I can't stop. I can't turn it off. It just happens. No. Games <laughs> like Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Okay. I think it was Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. It's been a long time, but yeah. at the point where Ed Kenway sits atop of the crow's nest, and they're pulling into port, and you see that sprawling landscape, and the title shows Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. You're like, oh boy, this is an adventure. That's, that's when the sense of adventure is tingling. That... That is a great feeling. And it's not limited to video games only. Obviously, you can have it in books. Um, really, movies is what I think of because I associate it with, with usually a, a visual stimulus. Sure. For example, the sweeping shots in Lord of the Rings. I'm not saying that the books don't give you that same sense of adventure, but seeing Middle Earth, well, or New Zealand, whatever, that just, that just <laughs> is that where it was shot i didn't know i've never been to wikipedia so speaking of which right now if you go to wikipedia it's super annoying because they want you to give money because they is, don't want to show ads that is happening side note okay back to the topic back to the topic if i if i might add yes because all the games you've mentioned up to now are basically rated m <laughs> so oh. for our younger viewers is there a game, and I'll just say one of mine, okay. that I played when I was younger. Right. I don't remember what it was rated, but it couldn't have been rated more than T. It's probably E. It's called Mist. It was my oh. first ever point-click point adventure game. Yes. And I was thoroughly sucked in. I played it with uh, the lights off at night, which was a mistake. Because I actually kind of got the sense that, it, that I was in a, a horror game even though there's nothing that can physically harm you in the game. It, you're to your character. Like, obviously a video game cannot physically harm you yet, but in that game, there's nothing that can even harm your character. It's just a very mysterious, very dark kind of a feel while you're trying to solve all the puzzles. Yeah, but why did it give you that sense of adventure, that, that immersion, that like, well, I'm sucked into it. It was the mystery. Okay. I didn't know, and I wanted to figure it out. I okay. just didn't know, how, where am I? What am I doing here? How do I get out? And every little bit of lore that, that was in the world fit with the world and, and pushed me towards the answer. 
and it gave me just enough to to want to learn more but still that i didn't have the whole picture okay so use the word mystery i don't know if the word mystery applies to um, say arkham arkham knight or assassin's creed 4 black flag but exploration certainly does and that seems to be a common theme for this sense of adventure it's as though the sense of adventure is the thirst that is then satisfied with the exploration by the drinking of water in that sense is the exploration of the world and it works best when the world is fully developed when it's immersive and the characters seem real of course in mist you're by yourself but there's other games out there where or the are you oh come on don't do that see i had I to i had to so i shouldn't play it alone in yeah. the dark all right, so we're doing that thing where we talk too much and we okay. beat a topic to death. So, Speaking of beating a topic to death, have you heard about Battlefront 2 made by word. Electronic Arts Entertainment? We could think that it is made by the devil himself because of all of the hate right now, which I'm not defending them. I'm just saying there's a lot of hate out there right now, and uh, I think it's subsiding. This is, after all, December now. It's, it's subsiding, but the analysts for the stock price of the company yes. are valuing it at less 3 billion less than it was previous to to the Battlefront quarter of performance results for stock prices. That's bad. I've read that's that. really bad. I've read that. And uh, yeah, that that's But it's bad for EA, not necessarily bad for gamers. The that's question awesome. is, can the game still be fun despite the huge controversy surrounding it? Okay, do you want to do a real very short recap of the short short controversy that has surrounded it just or, super short because okay. everyone knows basically somebody on reddit said hey it's going to take about 40 hours to unlock darth vader or luke because i make an average of i don't remember exactly what they said 600 600 credits per match 300 10 minutes yeah 300 okay roughly and uh <clears throat> you need about sixty thousand to unlock a character after enough outrage ea lowered the credit requirements for some of those characters luke and darth vader are now available after fifteen thousand. and then after more outrage about the loot box system because you have to remember that there is a a uh, another currency so there's credits and there's crystals that we like yeah to just that. like pretty much any mobile game currently on the market so yes that's actually a thing that's happening i believe what's the term called again it's called uh microtransactions currency oh yes of course microtransactions get you premium currency so there's i, I didn't know there was a term for yeah, the there is okay it's a it's another devious way to get you to spend more money so after that this is all within like a span of a week and the week preceding the release of battlefront 2 no less so it yep. happened very quickly uh belgium's minister of like games or something i don't think that's an office but <laughs> essentially someone in belgium thought maybe some belgian is... minister plays video games all day for his job and was like i gotta speak up about this maybe this is gambling so <laughs> then there was bad press and then there was a disney call to ea and people are thinking maybe that had to do with it so here we are now no loot boxes for sale yeah they dropped that so have you actually played the game i'm asking that and i know the answer but for our audience sake tell me i have and I actually kind of enjoyed it. Oh my gosh, you can't say that. Okay, the truth Because it's is, not popular. It's a good game. Asterisk, the progression is horrible. Okay, I was initially trying to argue against that the progression is horrible. Okay. With a couple of points. They're, they're not the strongest points out there. I Let's realize hear. that. Let's hear. Let's but hear. here they are. Okay. First of all, the loot bot, the card system. Okay. Appeals to gamers who like to collect cards. Sure. Such as, I don't know, Magic the Gathering players or Pokemon card collectors. Stop, I didn't grow up with that at all. I well, didn't. I don't actually like cards. I don't collect cards. Okay. I did when I was a kid, so I get it. But I, I basically haven't been into cards ever since they stopped being valuable, <laughs> which they are not. And if you don't believe me, go go Google hot like old hockey cards and baseball cards and what they're worth today and you'll find sites where people are trying to get rid of tens of thousands of their cards in their collections 
but they can only get rid of them at like a penny per card. Okay. It's, it's pretty sad. But these cards are virtual, so there is no actual real world value. But it does appeal. I will admit, it does appeal to It appeals to the collector nature. side. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. The, I do see the problem with it that it takes a while to get the cards. Um, but the thing is, you can you can get this. Uh, it's not a currency, but it's it's the parts. Parts. Yes. The craft and the parts. you can craft your own cards. That is true. So if you pick out a couple of cards you know you want, yes. you can just craft it yourself. So progression is not entirely random. That is a thing that should be pointed out. Uh, sometimes the game is being criticized for having an entirely random progression system, and it doesn't matter what class you play. It doesn't guarantee that that class gets stronger. But the other argument that, that was really strong that I don't really have a good answer for came from uh, none other than Juvenlast, who was at the Battlefront party with you and I. And he said that um, the progression doesn't reward you for your performance because when you end a match, if the match was under a certain time limit and you won, you get a certain number of credits the whole team gets that certain number of credits. So okay. it doesn't matter that you were the second or third or first in, in the match. Let you, me, you had let more me, points, you had more battle points, but it still doesn't matter. Let me insert my comment here. I watched the Angry Joe review for Star Wars Battlefront 2. He showed a clip where he scored dead last in his team, and the guy that he was playing with scored first. Their actual scores in the game were were factors apart, possibly order of magnitude. I don't remember the exact details. Is but that so? When they compare the credits that they earned from that match, there is not an actual relationship between your score and the credits that you earn. Certainly, it's not a direct <clears throat> or proportional relationship. So the guy who won first place on his team got possibly 10% more credits than Angry Joe did, even though their actual score was, his, his the, the, the first place guy's actual score was multiples of Angry Joe's score. And that that is irksome for some players. And we just had the first update drop and I haven't played it with that new update yet. For me, the only thing the update did was it stopped my system, both the PS4 and my PC from uh, dropping frames. Oh, well, that's good Which news, actually. It's weird that both systems did that. So we're getting wordy again. Stop. And I Let's just want to ask on. one quick question about Battlefront. All right. Can you just play it and enjoy it as a, as a game? Yeah, you can. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Space so speaking of awesome. enjoying a game. Sorry. All right. We'll go on. Yes. We'll go on. We're we'll moving on. on. We'll we're doing on. this. So I want to ask you, because so far we've talked about a sense of adventure a game that you can enjoy if you can just set aside the controversy. But is there a game right now that you just you wake up in the morning and you think, I want to play that? What are you playing right now that gives you that feeling? It's a guilty pleasure, but it is Doom, which is not a title that is a stranger to controversy. Nor is it for the faint of heart or those less than 17 years of age. That is also true. <laughs> It's a little absurd in terms of the violence and the gore, but... Can that be turned off? Well, I haven't tried that. That would be a good question to ask. Because I'm, I'm not a big gore person. Okay. Myself. There's definitely giblets, if you ever have looked up that term. There are giblets in this game. Okay. Uh, there was a giblet in the turkey that we had for Thanksgiving, and it was disgusting. Okay. Uh, same. Okay. Same Fair enough. Here. And uh, the game is, is uh, very much aware that it is a video game. There are health pickups that glow. There are armor pickups that glow. And there are hidden items all over the map. It's very self-aware. Story is minimal, which usually I prefer more of a story. As but, do I. But in this case, the gameplay is just so solid, so smooth. Everybody who said that last year... They were right. I just haven't gotten around to playing it. Well, everyone's not always right. But it sounds like in this case, they might be. They might. And they I've might. heard it now from several people. So I guess, peer pressure-wise, I'm obligated to at least try it. So when you turn 17, go and try out that game. I I think I'm over, 
over that age oh, a little. I'm sorry, this is awkward. almost double, I, uh... actually. So uh, moving on uh, somewhere else, some what other are topic. You playing? I'm playing Divinity Original Sin Two. Okay. Which there's nothing about this game that takes you out of its world. When you're playing it, you don't want to stop. It has a really interesting story. The characters are all well developed and have interesting dialogue. Oh, it has story. That's the good. gameplay is fun. It's turn-based RPG, so it's strategic. You can you can thoughtfully play through the combat. You can explore. You can get that exploring, you know, drive that you love to have so you much. Sense of adventure. You sense of adventure. To, you get sure. to satiate your sense of adventure. And it's just fun. And it's got split screen co op as well. I mean, that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Seriously, like if there's anything Coalesce Games loves, split screen split screen co op every time cool. so with that said it's time for us to wrap up uh just a quick plug for coalesce games if you'd subscribe to our channel we're going to be talking about stuff like this a little more often because we see that gamers are polarized by what's going on in society today and we just want to bring everybody together yep so any final thoughts ghost crow nothing really just go ahead and uh, search for us on youtube coalesce games don't search it with a space. It's all one It's word. bad. Yeah, there's some other game out there called Coalesce. It's messy. They uh, they made a game. That's good for them. Yep. That's what we want to do. Oh, we did it. What? We did it. Yeah. yeah. It's true. It all right. True. Well, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy gaming.